Number 58. Letter A. A jet airplane is flying from Darwin, Australia. Has an air speed of 260 meters per second in a direction 5 degrees south of west. It is in the jet stream, which is blowing at 35 meters per second in a direction 15 degrees south of east. What is the velocity of the airplane relative to the Earth? All right. So anytime they start um, asking us questions about uh, relative velocities, we really have to define what all the given velocities are in relation to. So first, the 260 meter per second airspeed of the jet. What is that velocity relative to? Well, it says airspeed, right? So this is the velocity relative to the air. So take a look at my diagram over here on the left-hand side. I have now my uh, velocity of the plane relative to the air, and that had a velocity of 260 meters per second, and they told me it was five degrees south of west. Okay, so that's detailed. Then they also told me that the jet is in the jet stream, which is blowing at 35 meters per second. Now, it doesn't say what that velocity is relative to, right? It just says it's in the jet stream. So therefore, whenever they don't mention what the uh, velocity is relative to, just assume it is relative to the Earth. All right, so in my picture now, here's the velocity of the air relative to the Earth, meaning the jet stream velocity, and it is 35 meters per second, and they told me it is at a direction of 15 degrees south of east, and that's what it is. So now, what's the velocity of the airplane relative to the Earth? Okay. So now we have everything set up. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our relative uh, velocity formula. So let's detail that. So this says the velocity of AC should equal the velocity of AB plus the velocity of BC. Now, A, B, and C could be whatever things you like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the question. It says, what is the velocity of the airplane relative to the Earth? So the airplane relative to the Earth. So that means the velocity of the airplane relative to the Earth should be equal to then... Now, look, my A is the same, right? That's A stands for airplane here. So the velocity of the airplane relative to now, what is the B in the problem? Well, the B in the problem is going to be the air, right? So actually, you know what? Let me just backtrack and let me call so I don't get two. Uh, I don't want two of the same uh, subscripts here. Let me call it the velocity of the plane, okay? Relative to the earth is equal to the velocity of the plane relative to the air plus the velocity then of the air relative to the earth. Okay, so in order to find this, I need to know this vector and this vector. All right, cool. So let's see if we have these values. So the velocity of the air relative to the earth. Oh, here it is. So I know that. Great. The velocity of the plane relative to the air. Oh, I have that too. Great. So I just have to add them up. Well, yes, but not so quickly because we have to add up their components, right? We can't simply take this vector value and add it to this vector. Why? Because they are vectors in two planes, meaning this vector has both X and Y components, and this vector has both X and Y components. Therefore, we have to add the components separately, okay? So what's important, though, to realize is that this is basically a resultant vector equals vector A plus vector B problem, okay? That's basically what it boils down to. So knowing that, we can use our component table. So component table, okay, so here we have the x components and the y components. Here I'm going to write for vector a, vector b. Then when I add these things up, I finally get my resultant vector, which remember the resultant vector is the answer I'm looking for, the velocity of the plane relative to the earth. All right, so let's break up each of these things into its components. All right, so first the velocity of the plane relative to the earth, I call that a. So that's going to be this vector right here in the picture. So let's break it up into the components, all right? So here's the x component of that vector. Yeah, I trailed off a little bit. Let me redraw that a little. Oh, one more time, guys. There we go. Okay, so that's the x component, right? Now this is, I'll call this, um, we'll just, well, uh, vector x. Actually, let me call it vector ax. And that's going to be some negative value, right? Because it's in the negative y excuse me, negative x, and now here is the uh, y vector. This is the velocity of a in the y direction, and that's also going to be negative because it's in the negative y. Okay, so let's first take a look at this one. All right, 
Remember, I know the hypotenuse of the triangle. I know this angle, and I'm looking for the side adjacent to the angle. So therefore, I'm going to use cosine there. So cosine of theta is going to be equal to uh, the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So cosine of 5 will equal uh, negative the velocity uh, of a in the x direction divided by 260. If you forget the velocity sign being negative, everything's going to work out wrong. Okay, so the signs are extremely important here. So then, simply now the negative, excel, uh, negative velocity of a in the x direction is simply going to now equal, just multiply, take cosine of 5, and then multiply that by 260, and we get 259. So that should kind of make sense. All right, and then just move the uh, negative sign on over. So this is negative 259. And this is meters per second. I'm just going to leave out all the units. So this is negative 259. Great. All right, let's move on to now the y. All right, so here's y. I know the hypotenuse. I know this angle. I'm looking for the side opposite of that angle. Therefore, I'm going to use sine. So sine of theta is equal to the opposite side of the hypotenuse. The sine of 5 will then equal the negative velocity of a in the y direction divided by 260. So negative VAY is going to equal, just do your cross multiplication, sine of 5 times 260, 22.7. Okay, so we get 22.7. Simply just move the negative sign on over. So now we get negative 22.7. Plug it into your table, negative 22.7. So that one's done. Now let's move on to the uh, other vector. Okay, vector, oops, hold on one second, sorry. Let's move on now to vector uh, b, right? So vector b here in the problem is the same thing as the velocity of the air relative to the earth, and here it is in my coordinate plane. So let's break that up into its components. So here's the x component right there. So I'll call this vbx. Okay, that's a positive value because it's in the positive x direction. And now we draw the y, and that is vby, and that's negative, right? Because it's in the negative y direction. All right, guys. So now let's go and calculate each uh, one separately. So let's first take a look at the x component, right? I know the hypotenuse of the triangle. I know this angle. I'm looking for the side adjacent to that angle. Therefore, I'm going to use cosine. So cosine of theta is equal to the opposite. Oop, almost made a mistake. Op the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Cosine of 15 will equal uh, velocity of b in the x direction divided by 35.0. So the velocity of the b vector in the x direction will simply be, so in your calculator, cosine of 15, so cosine of 15 times 35. And we get 33.8. So that works out to 33.8. Take that, plug it in. So 33.8. Great. Now let's take a look at uh, the y value. Okay. Remember, I know the hypotenuse. I know this angle. I'm looking for the side opposite of that angle. Now, therefore, I'm going to use sine. So sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the sine of 15 will be equal to negative of uh, velocity of the b of b in the y direction divided by 35.0. Simply do your cross multiplication here. Sine of 15 times 35. Oops, hold on. Sine of 15 times 35. And we get 9.06. So we get 9.06 here. And then simply now just move the negative sign on over. So negative 9.06. Plug it in. So negative 9.06. Great. Now, to find the resultant vector here, all we have to simply do is add the components. All right? So to find the x component, simply take now negative 259 plus 33.8. So this becomes negative now, negative 20, 225. Okay, great. And then do the same thing for the y. So we got negative 22.7 minus 9.06, and it comes up to negative 31.8 when we consider rounding. So these are now the components of my resultant vector, right? So actually, if you go back to my picture, I know it's a little cluttered over here, but if we were to consider where this vector should be, right, it shouldn't be as long as this in the negative x direction. It should end probably somewhere around here, right? So we'd have that line. And then we would go down more than this negative y value, which was negative 27, right? We should go down maybe to about here. And this now, this line will represent the resultant vector. 
which kind of makes sense, right, guys? The resultant vector, we right? It kind of makes sense that it should be somewhere in here. If the velocity of the plane is going this way, and I have an air, uh, the the air from the jet stream kind of pulling us in the opposite direction, right? The plane shouldn't fly directly this way. It'll probably migrate in this direction a little more, okay? And also the y components will add together because they're both facing in the negative y direction. All right, so let's simply now calculate the value of that resultant. So simple formula here to calculate the resultant vector. It's simply equal to the square root of the sum of all the x components squared plus the sum of all the y components squared. So now all we have to do is just plug the values in. So we found the sums already, right? That's what we did just before. So we got negative 225, and that's going to be squared, plus negative 31.8 squared. All right, take out your calculator. And square root of negative 225 squared uh, plus negative 31.8 squared. Make sure you use parentheses appropriately, otherwise it's going to come out as undefined. You cannot have a negative sign under the radical, and there will not be a negative sign under this radical. So we have 227, and I'll, I'm going to write meters per second, because that is the resultant. Now, remember guys, that's the resultant vector, and we said that the resultant vector was the same thing as the velocity of the plane relative to the air, and what was the question asking us? It says, what is the velocity of the airplane relative to the uh Earth. Actually, what did I say? Air? Sorry. <laughs> we found the resultant, right? The resultant represents the velocity of the plane relative to the Earth. I'm looking at the letter. I'm saying air and it's an E. So uh, that's what the question was asking us. It's asking us to find the velocity of the airplane relative to the Earth. And we found it. That is this value of 227 uh, meters per second. All right. And then letter B, I just discussed it before, trying to give you guys some intuition there. All right. So, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped. Please do subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.